Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Books in the World, a presentation of the Cape Cod Writers' Center. It's too bad you can't be with us in the studio today to meet our guest, Kathleen Tihan, because we have chocolate chip cookies. And I don't know how long this lovely plate of them is going to last because we have a half an hour to devour them. But we're going to talk about chocolate chip cookies. Our author today, Kathleen, has written a book called The Cookie Loved Round the World. And we have round cookies right here. And of course, Kathleen, welcome to the program. Thank you, Bob. It's great to be here. I understand reading your book is uh, apparently small as it is. There's a great deal of information in here that you were a salad girl making the salads at the Toll House restaurant. Yes. In Wareham? Whitman. Whitman, in Whitman, Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, so you're sort of in on the story of the Toll House cookie. Yes, yes. Um, two of my aunts were actually waitresses there before I was born, so I heard stories from them and from people all over Whitman because almost every woman worked at the Toll House. It was, that was the pace of employment. Yes, it was. Now, the Toll House restaurant existed well before the cookie, or a short time before the cookie. Seven years before the cookie. Seven years. No, no. <laughs> it took a while for the cookie to uh, get together. Yes. <laughs> what was the story of the restaurant itself, the Toll House restaurant? Well, it's a neat story. Ruth Wakefield graduated from Framingham Normal School in 1924. Her name at the time was Ruth Graves, and she met Ken Wakefield, who was working at a meat packing company in Brockton in the office. They got married, and um, she was teaching, and she was doing demonstrations for food at um, different stores. But her dream was to own a restaurant. So in 1930, which was during the Great Depression, mm -hmm. other restaurants were closing. People who lived in the beautiful Victorian homes around the South Shore were letting their maids, their cooks, and people go. And she wanted a place where people could forget about their worries, come in and enjoy a delicious home-cooked meal in a beautiful surroundings. Now that's, that's a noble thought, but in the face of tight money, mm -hmm. businesses closing during the Great Depression in the United States in the early 30s, mm -hmm. uh, it would seem like a foolhardy plan to figure people are going out to eat when they had barely enough to make it at home. Right. So. Um, the first week that they opened at, after you know, taking out a mortgage, and Ruth had written a cookbook called um, Tasted and True Recipes, and that cookbook was um, published several different editions, totaling finally 37, but at the beginning, some of the money she had from that and from their jobs and the mortgage, they opened the restaurant with only $50 left to provide the food for the restaurant and whatever else, pay utilities. Um, the first week the restaurant was opened, a socialite from Whitman wanted to have her bridge club there. So she had the money, so they used all seven tables because it was only a very small place at the beginning, seven tables. They came, they had a great time. She raved about it and she said, oh, please send me the bill. So the second day, they were down to $30 to um, take care of customers. And one elderly couple came, and that was it. So there were six empty tables. And the third day, nobody came. But after the fourth day and the next week, things picked up. And word got around, and people would go out. The prices then were so different from what they are now, a person could get a complete seven course meal with main course of filet mignon or uh, baked stuffed lobster for $2.25. Mm -hmm. 
I, well, but, <laughs> but oh, oh, there were a lot of people who didn't have $2.25 to eat out. Right, they didn't, but there were enough people. Um, now, the, with, uh, the Wakefields, mm -hmm. uh, did they move into this house as a house for them or as a business or a combination of both? Right. At the beginning, they lived upstairs and then afterwards they bought a house that was right behind the toll house. But the toll house had been built in the um, early times of our country and it was a place across the street from where tolls were actually collected. It was the road, it was, the street is Bedford Street and it was the street between Boston and New Bedford and during the whaling industries Stagecoaches would stop there to have um, new horses attached for the long ride either way and people would go across the street to this little inn and have a meal. That was many years before the Wakefields. So the Wakefields bought the house that was across the street from the real toll from house. Toll collecting place. And they right. called their place the Toll House Restaurant. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, let's get down to cookies, <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen. Uh, where did the cookie story and the actual cookie enter the picture? Well, the, there are a lot of variations of the story, but the variation that I put in my book, which is the one that I found in the Whitman Historical Society's records, and since then has been substantiated by Ruth Wakefield's daughter oh. is that they ran out of walnuts one day at the restaurant and during the depression that were it was difficult to get butter it was difficult to get sugar at times like for all the people were trying alternative recipes in their homes because they couldn't get the ingredients they needed for lots of different things so um, they were making the cookies and the baker told Ruth that they had no walnuts. So cookies were on the menu as a restaurant item. Yes. But they were running out of ingredients. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. It was called the dewdrop cookie and they served it always with all meals and they were having a wedding. So the baker you know, was in a dither and saying, what are we going to do? And Ruth looked around the kitchen and she saw this 25 pound block of semi-sweet chocolate, which is oh. the way it came. It was a, a great big chunk of yes. uh, restaurant right. sized chunk of chocolate. Yes. <laughs> and she um, took an ice pick and chipped off some pieces of chocolate and they put that in the batter and tried it. They didn't know what was going to happen, whether it would melt or whatever. and it came out with all the chunks and it smelled delicious and tasted delicious and the cookie was born. And, and a total <laughs> acceptance or a slow spread of word? No, immediate. Imme <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, immediate among all the workers at the Toll House. They loved it, the customers loved it, and it became, you know, one of their signature foods at the restaurant and they even packaged it later and sold packages of So the of Toll House restaurant mm -hmm. had a cookie and it became the Toll House cookie. It wasn't just a, a crunchy thing. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, yep. and then it became the Toll House chocolate chip cookie and then chocolate chips were invented because of Oh, the Perfect. chocolate chips came later. You, yes. That's right. You said that the original chocolate came from a great big restaurant-sized chunk of chocolate that chipped out. Mm -hmm. uh, following the, the chip story, uh, yes. the restaurant had the cookie. Mm -hmm. It was popular. But where did it start to get this <laughs> national acceptance or the, the interest in it? I know. Well, one of the reasons was in 1938, there was a Betty Crocker cooking school on, on the radio, and she talked about it on her show, so it became popular. Then, during World War II, Nestle's wanted to promote their product, which at the time was the semi-sweet chocolate chip morsels that they invented with Ruth. 
she helped them to invent the morsels. She was a very smart woman. So, um, and when they first invented them, they sold it as a bar with a knife that you could score and then use those in your cookies. Oh. Oh, so, so Nestle made the chocolate, but it was still in a chunk. Yeah, more of a bar, a, a just bar. one layer uh -huh. with 160 divisions, so you would... Uh, sort of like this, like that. Yes. I don't know, about a foot square, was mm. it? Probably, yeah, I don't know exactly, but, but um, then Nestle's had a huge advertising promotion that the way women could do a patriotic thing for their country, for their husbands, their fathers, their brothers, their boyfriends, would be to send them chocolate chip cookies. And that's how <laughs> care packages and so, sending cookies so started. The, the corporation got behind it saying it's a patriotic thing to do yes. to send your serviceman overseas the cookie made with our product. Right. Wow, that's patriotism and commercialism all bound together. Right, and it worked. <laughs> I guess it did. <laughs> but it, it was a win-win for everybody because, of course, to receive homemade cookies when you're overseas and in horrendous... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When they, made, when they did mail call in the service mm -hmm. and someone got not just a letter but a box, the rest of this group, his buddies, would follow this guy back to the barracks <laughs> and say, when are you going to open that box? Right. Oh, yeah, to share. And they did share with each other. I don't know how much, but, um, but people did share it. And the cookie became popular all over the country at that time. And yeah, and that's what brings us all the way to this book today called The Cookie Loved Round the World that yes. our guest Kathleen has put together. Uh, your, in, your background is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I read in your book that you were the salad girl at the Toll House restaurant. Yes. Uh, making, obviously, the salads. Right, yeah. We made gelatin molded salads, lobster salad, tossed salads. So that was while I was going to Bridgewater State College to become a teacher, so I had many part-time summer jobs and school jobs, and, and that, that was, was one. That was one of yours. Yes. Your, your background is interesting, Kathleen, uh, from Salad Girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and testing the taste of Coal House Restaurant Cookies, to give their full name. Yes. Uh, you were, you have been a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a legislator here in Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, tell me something about that. I, well, I taught middle school and high school English and um, love teaching and my students. But my late husband had run for the legislature in the 70s and spent four years representing Whitman and East Bridgewater, but then they were um, downsizing the house from the 240 to the 160 members and he decided not to run. Oh. So I was then teaching at the time after that, and an opening came up because our representative was running for district attorney in Plymouth County. So somebody suggested my husband run, and we were talking, and then it came up, why didn't I run? So I did, and I loved my 10 years of representing Abington, Whitman, and East Bridgewater. Every day was exciting. It was thrilling to meet people, to learn all the needs of our state and about everything. So it, it was great. But the first year, a third grade class from Somerset, Massachusetts had had this wonderful unit about cookies. And they took a poll to see what was the favorite cookie of the school. And then they created um, little jingles and posters to advertise it. And they made cookies, sold them, and had to figure out the math. Well, this, was, this was a grammar school activity? Yeah, it was a third grade. Well, I was in the legislature. It was in 1997, but a third grade yeah, elementary school activity. Mm -hmm. And they had this enthusiasm for cookies that uh, mm -hmm. what brought to, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating here because it's a school activity, 
but it got somehow into the legislation <laughs> activity. Right. What was the, well, the slope of the entry into that? Well, Senator Thomas Norton from Somerset was visiting the school and he saw what the classes were doing and they told him all about it. And he said, that's very good. Why don't you try to make the chocolate chip cookie the official cookie of Massachusetts? The official <laughs> Massachusetts cookie. Right, yeah, because we have symbols like the official bird of Massachusetts is the chickadee, the official berry is the cranberry, and we have different things that tell about our culture and our history. So he challenged them, so they took up the challenge and asked me to co-sponsor the bill with Senator Norton to make this our state cookie. <laughs> and it became part of the whole... Mm -hmm. Right. We wrote the bill, and I was on the State Administration Committee, which deals with very serious issues, such as where Massachusetts invests their money, um, what the public bidding laws are for construction and all kinds of new bill bidding, also um, laws like no smoking in state and public buildings oh, that was a big thing at the time. So it was my committee, so they had a hearing about making this cookie, the state cookie, a chocolate chip. I would imagine that if you're bringing up legislation, you say, and now hear this in Massachusetts legislature, uh, we have very serious issues today with money, with facts, with taking care of people, with social issues, mm -hmm. and now I would like to bring up a subject to make this cookie the national, or the, I'm sorry, the statewide uh, yes. cookie of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Did people sort of say, what? <laughs> well, I said what because it was my first year in the legislature, and I didn't want to be known as the woman who went to Boston to make the chocolate Cookies. chip cookie <laughs> because I was working on public health issues and children's health issues and getting money to have um, dental care included in the children's chip program and the children's um, other programs. So it was a little nerve-wracking, but I wanted to do it for my town because we were proud of it. And children in the past had been involved in similar kinds of legislation to make the ladybug the state bug. And so it had been done that. before. We have yeah. a state bug Yes, as well. we do, the ladybug. And she's a very lucky bug, too. She brings you good luck. But um, so it, it was a fun thing, and it's amazing because at the time, I would send out press releases about my other legislation and didn't get a lot of attention. But this cookie debate between the Fig Newton from Newton and the chocolate chip cookie from Whitman became hugely popular in all the newspapers, statewide, locally. We got a call from the BBC <laughs> asking if we were really debating biscuits in Massachusetts. So, so we did, we had all kinds of publicity Governor Weld at the time was a governor, was involved in it, and it was fun. I got the nickname Cookie in the legislature because <laughs> I was doing it, but it was a fun thing to do, and um, it was really good for the kids, but of course, when the kids came in to testify, they came to our committee, and they had all these reasons, but the young woman who gave the testimony saying that whoever came home from school and said, oh, mom, you baking fig cookies today and was all excited. No, but it, kids come home and smell chocolate chip cookies baking in the oven would be very excited. So yes. that one. Speaking of aromas, uh, any cooking, any, any baking in the kitchen is a home feeling. Yes. <laughs> but if there's chocolate added to the flavor and the aroma in the kitchen, mm -hmm. that, that has to be a has to be a plus. Right, it's, it's very welcoming and... Um, uh -huh. uh, that's not the end of legislation or information about the cookie. I understand they're uh, talking of New Year's activities. And yes. there's a New Year's activity tied in to the chocolate cookie. Right, <laughs> yes. 
in 2013, we had a first night in Whitman Center. And Whitman's a very small town. It's about six square miles. But um, we are very proud of our cookie. And so the South Shore Vocational Technical High School students built this cookie out of metal with some lights in it and wires. And a fire truck extended their ladder and had the cookie hung from it. And we had our own cookie drop at midnight going into 2014. Like, so it's, instead of the glass call ball coming down in Times Square, right. <laughs> they had, now this is very small on a big screen, but mm -hmm. there's a manufactured massive cookie right. and it came down at the stroke of midnight. Right, yes it did. Yeah, and it, um, it was a great community event and you know, through my book, I want not just to tell the story of this cookie and its inventor, which is a great story of a woman entrepreneur in 1930 who was ahead of her time, but I want it to be something that will inspire kids to follow their dreams and for communities to come together and be there for each other. And it would not be hard to surmise that <clears throat> these children, and they were school children at the time, mm -hmm. knowing that applying to the right people at the right place, as in legislature, mm -hmm. uh, that things can be done from a small start. Right. <laughs> they have been through our history. When you look at Dorothy Day and you look at Eleanor Roosevelt and Martin Luther King and so many people who, you know, just took that one person to take, to have the courage to move forward and speak up and do things, and, and they happen. And I want people to know about world hunger because we're talking about cookies. Well, some people don't even have enough food to survive. Well, that's and, true. And in the United States, we eat seven billion chocolate chip cookies a year. <laughs> with a B? Yes, with a B. Seven billion no. chocolate mm -hmm. We don't have that many here. No. <laughs> and you brought in a plate of them. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, are these from scratch? Yes, they are from scratch, and they're the original recipe. It's not the recipe on the bag of Nestle's chocolate chips. Aha! Uh -huh. The original recipe dates back to the Depression where they used shortening instead of butter. They didn't have walnuts, and there are little variations in the amounts. And a woman in Whitman named Pat Gaquin, whose mother was a baker, has the original recipe, and she's sharing it. And I'm hoping it wasn't available when my book was published, but I'm going to add a bookmark to the book with the original recipe. Oh, all right, so the original recipe is not the chocolate chip cookie we see today. On or, the or Nestle's taste package, today. right. Well, this, what were the these variations? Are, oh. you, you mentioned the shortening difference. Right, and then the brown sugar and the white sugar, instead of being one cup, it's one and an eighth cup, and the amount of flour is different, the amount of eggs is different, and Ruth, um, dissolved the baking soda in hot water before she added it to the batter. So, and there weren't walnuts because they didn't have walnuts. So, oh, but, but so I made half without walnuts and half with walnuts. All right, well, you were kind enough to bring in <laughs> chocolate chip cookies that you made. Which recipe is this, uh, Kathleen? This is the original one, and this one has a nut, but it's the recipe with the shortening and with the original amounts of the ingredients. Oh, because there, I brought in a box oh. <laughs> of chocolate chip cookies I made yesterday afternoon. Uh, oh, nice. And they, they aren't as thick for top to bottom as yours because I used a shortcut. I bought a, a refrigerated roll uh, oh, yes. of pre-mix. Mm -hmm. well, uh, the Nestle's has it in the refrigerator case in the grocery store, 
And I cut off slices of it and baked it 12 to 13 minutes. It was a lot 325 quicker. 325 <laughs> degrees, and they turned out this way. Uh, which is so still I'm going yummy. to share with you. Here's a, here's a, a oh, cookie thank you. of mine. Thank you. And here's a cookie of yours. Oh. And if you'll excuse us for just a moment, uh, we, we're busy here <laughs> at, at the studio. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're crunchy. Mm, they are crunchier. Mm, they really make a crunch. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you as an audience for l watching us sit here and eat chocolate <laughs> chip cookies. I'm sorry you couldn't be here. We have a couple of minutes left. And I have to tell you something. Between, between <laughs> crunches, <laughs> mm. I, I guess we can blizzle an appetite. Yes, <laughs> but one thing other about the Nestle's chocolate chips and everything, Ruth sold the rights to her recipe and her name, Toll House Chocolate Chip Cookies, to Nestle's for one dollar and a lifetime supply of chocolate. And when you think of what they have made in billions, since then. So Ruth Wakefield made a dollar? And a lifetime supply of chocolate. Well, well that's, a, that's a good... <laughs> yeah, Lord, there's some, there's some salvation in there. <laughs> and we're talking today about the cookie love around the world by our guest, Kathleen Tehan. Mm -hmm. Am I saying your name Tien. correctly? It's like Sheehan and Dean Tehan. Tehan. Yes. Is, uh, Oh, <laughs> the crunch, the official cookie, the 1935, 1913, uh, I'm sorry, 2013 cookie drop. Did they still do that? They did it for a couple of years, but then the crowd wasn't as large, so they've stopped. I think it was too cold to, like, and people would go into Boston. Uh huh. The chocolate chip cookie. It's been around for now decades. Yes. Uh, it goes back to what? It was 1937. So, so it would be 81 <laughs> years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I know. The cookies we're ending the program with today, <laughs> <laughs> and with our guest Kathleen Jehan, were made yesterday. They're not 80 or it, 90 years no, old no. yet. <laughs> but if this cookie has interested you at all, and I'm sure that there's n I don't think there's anyone who doesn't like a chocolate chip cookie. I've never met anybody who doesn't like <laughs> Kathleen's <laughs> never met anyone, nor I. And if you're by the studio for the next six seconds after the program is <laughs> taped today, I'm sorry, they'll be all gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to thank you again, Kathleen, for coming in today with your cookies and the book called The Cookie Love Round the World, The Story of the Chocolate Chip Cookie by our guest Kathleen G. Hahn. And we thank you very much for listening, for watching today. And I'm sorry you couldn't join us for the moment of taste <laughs> and, ex and just exuberance. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very well, much. Thank you, Kathleen, for coming in and for the cookies today, oh. too. Oh. And we very thank welcome. you for viewing today's episode of Books in the World, a presentation of the Cape Cod Writers Center. Thanks for viewing. Crunch. Crunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs>